Hello everybody, Wisa here. Welcome to First Taste, where we get a glimpse of the first few minutes of a game. Today's episode features Grim Dawn, which was released on February 26, 2016, and developed and published by Crate Entertainment. Grim Dawn is a fantasy action RPG set in Cairn, a war-torn world where the goal is to adapt and to fight for humanity's survival. We have what it takes to survive. Without further ado, let's explore. Okay, so I created Wisa just a few seconds ago, and let's start with the campaign. We paid a heavy price, but the trap worked. You seem surprised. It's been a while since we've had a win. How long will it hold? I've never entrapped a being like this, but the bonds hold, for now. How do we dispose of it? I'm just a witch. You're the soldier. If it bleeds, I can kill it. How do you kill a spirit, though? If you kill the mortal vessel while it's bound, the spirit may perish within. If it escapes... It's listening to us. What are you? Others of your kind name us Ethereum. Why have you invaded our world? Your world. We existed first. We were managed by your corrupt gods. Your part of the name. And how we return to claim what my right should be ours. I've heard enough of this rubbish. Let's hang it. Sorry. The spirit has fled. This is a human now. The captain is correct. When they awaken, they won't remember a thing. The ethereal was right. The war is lost. We're a resistance now. And we need every human survivor we can call to our cause. Maybe this one here can still die with some honor. If they ever wake up, send them to me. If they don't, bury them deep with the others. Bury him deep with the others, so there were a lot of possessed humans? Hmm. Who are these ethereals? Still drawing breath, I see. You're one lucky bastard, I'll give you that. Best go speak to Captain Bourbon right away. He seems to have a plan for you now that we've spared your life. What happened? How did I get here? You were possessed. So we uh, strung you up. Seems the spirit fled your body before your life ran out. I'd have left you to hang, but uh, the captain had other plans. He sees some purpose in you, and I'm not going to argue. Where can I find this captain, then? He's, um, up the road. In the courtyard. Don't make me regret cutting you down. I'll be on my way, then. Okay, so active quests, waking to misery. Speak to Captain John Bourbon at Devil's Crossing. That guy is... I mean, the one we just recently talked to, his voice sounds very familiar. Building site, this bridge once connected Devil's Crossing to the Arcovian foothills to the northwest. It must be restored before you can cross it. It will take six crap and 3,000 iron bits to repair. I don't think we have anything. Let's check our inventory, shall we? Yup, nothing. Inventory, auto sword, complete components. Nope, none. 
Okay, so we have a one-handed sword, worn clothing, plank shield. What else? Salt bag. A bag full of salt seemingly to ward off evil spirits. Oh, aren't salt bags or garlic bags what we use in real life to warn off like vampires and monsters? Anyway, so our attributes and combat stats, offensive, defensive damage per second, armor rating, and then resistances. Boy, zero resistances against anything. Two is damage per hit and then character. Three is defense and retaliation. Oh, there are so many much more stats, I see. Okay. Well, let's go talk to Captain then. But anyway, that guy, that guy's voice sounds familiar. As if he has already voiced a couple of game characters in the past. What are you standing around here for? If you're not going to make yourself useful, we may as well get another noose ready. Nah, I'm pretty good. I just wanted to hear your voice again. But anyway, guys, if you remember who that may be, please let me know in the comments section below. Is this him? So you're the one we almost hung. <laughs> I didn't really see a sense in it, but then again, no one really cares what old Barnabas thinks. I really should go speak with the captain. He'll be the one deciding whether there's a place for you here at Devil's Crossing. Take care. I thought that was the captain. Is this? Oh, this is the captain. You're not looking too bad for someone just come back from the brink of death. You were taken, possessed by the same creatures that have been reanimating these zombies here. Normally, I'd have burned you with the rest to be safe, but we've lost too many people to the dead. I need someone expendable. Someone with nothing to lose, but a lot to gain. Right now, you are that person. Prove your worth to me, and the survivors of Devil's Crossing may just welcome you. What is it you want me to do? The bodies of the dead are rising again in some horrible unlife. Corpses don't just get up and move around on their own. Something is reanimating our deceased with ethereal energy. We have observed the dead for some time, and they appear to be flooding lower crossing from the burial hill just beyond town. I want you to go to the burial hill, find whatever is controlling these abominations, and destroy it. Where can I find Burial Hill? Wait, I'd like to ask about something else. Very well, but make it quick. The longer you linger, the more dead gather at Lower Crossing. Oh, come on. We have all the time in the world. Now that most of the population is dead anyway. What are the ethereals? That's a tough question. Nobody knows for sure. Most of what I know is from old reports circulated by the Resistance shortly after the Grim Dawn. Okay, so the Grim Dawn is some sort of event that probably wiped out humanity it is said that the ethereals are not of this world the arcanists named them after the ether they so cherish for their sorcery ethereals possess living creatures and corrupt the flesh into whatever horrific shape they deem necessary i suppose you can count your blessings that you were not possessed long enough to experience this as far as i can tell what is the situation here? The ethereal really scrambled your memories, huh? The world has turned into a nightmare and there are things far worse than walking corpses out there. Such as what? This old prison now serves as the last human refuge in these parts. We get the occasional drifter passing through here with tales of other sanctuaries, but nothing I've been able to confirm. I don't think there's much left of our kind beyond these walls, but ruthless bandits strange cults and greedy salvagers eager to make profit even in these desperate times you want my advice make yourself useful here your other option is to die out there you will need to fight your way through lower crossing once you've crossed the stream on the far side of town there will be a beaten path leading up to burial hill i know i'm asking a lot of you but i'd be asking a lot of my people to welcome you with open arms too help us in our hour of need and I will open Devil's Crossing to you. I'll find what's reanimating those corpses then. Why isn't any of them helping us? Personal rift. Okay, so this shows the map. Devil's Crossing rift. Wow, this is a lot of UI. But not as plenty as that in 
Divinity Original Sin 2. What's happening? Wait. What is it now? The dead are rising in droves. So we go here immediately then. Okay, let's fight off the dead. Equipment comparisons. Placing the cursor over an item will show comparison of that item with your current equipment. I don't think there's any item drop. We killed it. So guys, the W A S D is not working. What I'm doing right now is just clicking on the ground to move my character. What is this rift? Can we go there? Devil's Crossing Rift. Yeah, maybe we can. You cannot teleport to this rift gate from the same rift gate. Oh, that is very much understandable. Can we buy anything from this guy? Merchants allow you to sell your collected loot and buy equipment and potions. Right-clicking an item is the quickest way to do so. Oh my dear. That is a lot of items. You do not have enough iron. So iron is our mode of currency in this game. We have zero. If I'm not mistaken, all of our items are currently equipped. So we can go with what we have at the moment. Nobody's even coming with us. I guess the captain didn't want to sacrifice any of his soldiers' life for us? Darn. Oh, these are like three of them. So good news, guys, is that they're not that hard to kill off. Okay, I tried, I tried for a couple of times to just not ram that left click button of the mouse and my character wasn't just hitting it so i guess i just have to ram it to the ground which i do not mind doing by the way i just wish there's a circle at the bottom or at the ground similar to what we have for divinity original sin 2 just so we can see where the character will end up in Upon moving, so we enter the cave under Burial Hill. Oh gosh. Wait, I'm kind of enjoying killing off these corpses. Wait, before we continue, I haven't really explored the interface yet. Faction window details on the various factions that inhabit Cairn. Oh, we have the Ethereals, the Hostile. You know what? Let's go read it to give more context into what we're going through. Foolishly and greedily did the Arcanists of Cairn delve into the magical veil known as the Aether. Never one suspecting that something was looking back. The Ethereals descended upon Cairn in what is now known as the Grim Dawn, possessing countless humans and butchering the rest. Most despicably of all, they began raising the fallen as mutated undead creatures, mindless foot soldiers for their invasion. Their very presence on Cairn is enough to mutate the wildlife, turning once docile creatures into vicious monstrosities. But most strange of all is their apparent hatred for Chthonians, as they will battle against the horrors from the void at every opportunity. Huh. Okay, who are these Chthonians? They're also hostile creatures. Chthonians' horrors from the void are the things of nightmares. Prior to the Grim Dawn, Chthonians would only be seen upon Cairn, following an arcane ritual gone wrong or at the beckoning of a powerful sorcerer. Despite an effort to exterminate the practice, a cult has formed around blood rituals and the worship of Chthonic beings. Members of the cult have been overheard chanting one name in particular, Chthon. With the world in disarray, the cult has grown strong, garnering new followers desperate for answers in a world that no longer makes sense. Chthonians and their loyal cult appear to be at odds with the Ethereals, eagerly harvesting helpless humans for blood so that the Ethereals cannot use them as vessels. Okay, so I see why these are both hostile creatures. I mean, none of them are advantageous or have any positive impact towards humans. One uses humans, which are the ethereals, and the other basically just kills off humans to prevent ethereals from using them. Devil's Crossing is a faction tolerated. 
survivors, that is the word used most often to describe the hardy denizens of Devil's Crossing. The men and women who made it through the Grim Dawn to form a small community within the ruins of an abandoned prison. They have seen all too many friends and family lost to the Taken, those found possessed by the Ethereals. Earning their trust will prove no easy task, but with supplies running low and a looming ethereal threat on the horizon, they must be they may just be willing to take a chance. Okay, so that's why they're kind of hesitant to take us in. Because of the number of people they already lost. They can't risk losing more of their important soldiers. Okay, let's see where we should go in the map. Or okay. Okay, it's not yet revealed. I guess we just have to look for it then. Let's go. I hear a corpse walking dead. Nice. Yeah, let's just kill him. What is this, by the way? Level up. You were currently at level two. Pause here again and let me see the other interface. So what is this? The Codex window, quest log, lore, devotion, shrines, and in-game help. Captain Bourbon explained that the survivors at Devil's Crossing are barely enduring through the relentless attacks of the dead. He believes they are coming from the caves beneath the burial hill and has put it upon you to investigate in exchange for shelter at Devil's Crossing. Head north across the bridge through the ruins of Lower Crossing. Once past the stream, Burial Hill will be on the left where the road forks. Got it. Okay, what I like about this is even though this interface is on, we can still fight off those zombies. So at least it, the game allows for multitasking to happen. I may be going in the wrong direction. It did say north. Maybe it's just far away. Unassigned points, you have unassigned attribute or skill points i do what is this harbor master's log lower crossing autumn fogs are appearing early this year but traffic remains unusually high can we read that all oh, right this is our inventory we probably have a separate section for books no this is skills windows how about let's check this out if the books are here no lore entries well okay then Let's just learn the skills and how to assign them. Oh, we have a lot. We have six classes. We have the Soldiers, Demolitionist, Occultist, Nightblade, Arcanist, Shaman. That's interesting. And the Devotion? What? Can we put points now? Points available is zero. Definitely not. Interesting. So, we choose one, I guess. Why don't we go with the uh, Arcanist? To Arcanist, the manifestation of magic. That's the reason why I'm choosing this. Is not some unexplainable mystery or the will of the gods, but a science meant to be unraveled. This pursuit of knowledge drives all Arcanists always eager to discover a new technique to make their namesake. Arcanists warp ethereal and elemental energy to their will, creating devastating demonstrations of power that rival small armies. However, such raw force leaves little in terms of defense. Well, there's that. So we only have three available points. Now we can assign that one here. And what is this? Inner focus. Focusing the mind and body into a locus for arcane energies is one of the first meditative techniques taught to aspiring arcanists. Left click to add a new skill point. Okay. The mastery and skills just disappeared. So why don't we add that up? And we still have one more available. Panetti's replicating missile, the greatest of the Kurtoshian arcanists. Panetti devoted himself to advancing the classic arcane missile. His triumph is an alteration that seemingly defies the laws of conservation of energy, causing the missile to be replicated on impact, spawning multiple copies of itself. Is that an active skill? Yeah, you know what? Let's just go for that and try it out. Oh, we have the option to undo points. That's cool. Yeah, but we'll stick to what we currently selected. Character window. Okay, that's our inventory. Mostly. Toggle 
quick bar slots. Wait, how do we add these skills over here? Or do we just click the corresponding number? Or not. Okay then. Devotion. Nope. Not devotion. Tonic of mending and elixir of spirit. What else? Rift travel. Tear a small entryway into the rift and exit at any previously discovered rift gate or through a gate created by another group member. I see. Weapon swap. Before you can use weapon swap, you must equip a second set of weapons in the alternate weapon slots of the character window, which is this one. So we do have a sword, but we don't have a staff for our magical abilities. We have the map. Achievements window and the options menu. Maybe I should have checked all of those first before we went on this adventure. But anyway, let's go for it. What, can we just slash him and loot any stuff? Apparently we can. Cool. Let's go down here. Goodbye, crate. Be gone. Oh, what is that? A wretcher? It's a good thing our life is high. Maybe I should have chosen a soldier instead of an arcanist since we already have the default sword and shield. Wait, you know what? Before we continue again, why don't we go ahead with that? It's the most logical decision. We can't undo our points now. Too bad. Too bad. Okay. Let's just go with this then. Wait, wait, wait. There was something here. Scrap metal hand blunderbuss. What is this? We can probably use it as our right-handed weapon. It's a musket. One-handed sword. How do we put that here? Oh, no, no. We're actually using a shield right now. Oh, I'm trying to put that in the slot. That's odd. Or do we right click on it? Okay, so right clicking exchanges the weapons that we have from our inventory to our character. And put that back here. And then... Wait, no! It's only meant for the shield! I'm not sure if we can use this gun. Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Based on the illustrations above. It's probably just a shield. Kind of odd. So does that mean there's no option for two-handed weapons? Uh oh okay, okay. There are way too many enemies right now. I should be hitting that Nemesis-looking enemy. Okay, it's a Barag the Bloodied, and it's not... I am not able to hit it as much as I should. That area is closed off. Oh no. Wait, wait, wait. We have a star over here, which means that... It's probably nearby. I mean, the cave is probably nearby. We're almost close to killing that dude. Come on, die! Nice, we reached level 3. Food ration. Enemy hero killed. Nice. Oh, that's a lot of loot! That's a lot of loot! Okay, we should probably change our gear at this point. Let's just kill off the other corpses. What are these journal entries? Nope! Don't have a chance. Journal Inquisitor Creed first entry. I'm currently en route to the village of Burwich in order to investigate a number of strange incidents that have been recorded in this area. And then the second one is... Okay. I was not able to read that before... Before picking it up. 
No lore entries. I thought I was under the impression that when we get books, it will be under the lore entries. Maybe, maybe just some of those, not everything. Oh my gosh. Do you mean to say that all of these were once human beings and all of them were corrupted? Because this is an entire restaurant. This was anyway. Whoa. Oh my dear. We just killed them off. What is that? Probably some food. Okay, I'm lost, but I'm... I'm having fun with, uh, with the battles. Well, largely because we're much stronger than the enemies. So that's a huge plus for me. Oh, look at that! Is that a chameleon dog? A strange creature! Definitely. Usually what happens is we start off with games, like in RPGs. Start off with a very weak character who is unable to defend himself or herself from enemies. But in this case, it's different. I didn't think it would be like this. Anyway, and that's a good thing. Let's change our... Oh, this one is 32 out armor. Goodbye, pants. Let's, let's use the new one. Wait, why can't we use that? X. Why is there... Required physique is 57. How do we do that? Okay, we can't equip it because there are some qualities of the character that we haven't fulfilled. How do we... Okay, we just add attributes to that. So, what, the required physique is 57. Oh, no, 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 no. Undo. It's too much. I thought it was only one point per, per attribute. So we can go with one physique, sure. And then what do we have here? One physique is physical conditioning gives you the strength to fight in heavier gear and the agility to avoid enemy attacks. Physique also greatly increases your capacity for pain, your ability to regenerate your wounds, and the ability to avoid being critically hit. Nice. Cunning. A cunning intellect improves your combat technique, increasing physical pierce, bleed, and internal trauma damage. Cunning also increases your capacity for pain, your chances of landing melee and ranged attacks, and critically hitting enemies. Okay, I'd like that. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty good. So now we can exchange our pants. Yeah. Goodbye, pants. Do we have new shoes? I don't think we do. Yeah, we don't. We don't. Now, what do we do with this one? Maybe that's why we couldn't equip the gun. No, but the cunning is... 28. Currently equipped is a one-handed sword. I do enjoy melee combat, so I'm thinking of just keeping it. Why don't we give it another try and just put the gun here? Oh darn, we can't. Okay then. Well, let us try the gun in this playthrough, shall we? Then let's just retain the shield. What else can we change? Oh yeah, definitely. Let's change this. Cool! Now we look like a legit soldier. Magical shield. Okay, 15% chance to block, 32 damage. Yeah, let's go with that instead of this sad wood. What else? This is where the journal is. Okay. Harbor Master's Log. Let's read that. Autumn fogs are appearing early this year, but traffic remains unusually high. There is a steady flow of small craft coming down from Malmouth and other townships to the northeast. Some of these boats are barely afloat, burdened with what looks like people's every possession. These travelers, sometimes entire families, bring with them strange tales of wars and the unnatural. Bunch of hogwash riling up the soft towns townsfolk. Can't complain though, keeps the dock busy. Most are westbound, trying to get as far away as they can. The lads at the docks are starting to lose their nerve. Some have talked about setting out west themselves, but I've assured them this is all nonsense and will pass. Youth are easily caught up in the energy of the moment. Oh yeah, definitely, I agree with that. I agree, especially with that last statement. Next one is the second entry. Also, this is the... 
No, this is the second entry. Let's read the first. Reading them puts them in our lore, lore area. Okay, fair enough. Inquisitor Creed first entry. I'm currently en route to the village of Burwich in order to investigate a number of strange incidents that have been reported in this area. So that was our blurb when we initially found the object. As dusk is drawing near and the swamps of this region are said to be hazardous to travel at night, I've reluctantly taken up lodging at a small squalid tavern in Lower Crossing. Perhaps I'm weary from my hurried travels, but I feel as if there is a strange pressure and electricity to the air. It is almost akin to the still before a thunderous summer gale, but yet the sun shines and not a cloud is to be seen. Everything seems as it should, but in my gut, I feel that something terrible will soon come to pass. Well, that is pretty negative. Second entry, as I was packing to resume my journey to Burwich, my assistance was urgently requested at a logging camp in the old grove west of Devil's Crossing, where strange animal attacks have left three lumbermen listless and pale. Were these the events that happened before the Grim Dawn? On arriving, I received a somber greeting from the foreman who informed me that the bitten workers had gone mad and fled the premises. They were reported to have spoken in an unknown tongue. The foreman showed me the remains of the animals, two gray foxes and a hound, suffering some sort of horrific mange, lay in a hastily dug pit behind the outhouse. The foreman told me the animals suddenly died when confronted by the workers and a strange green vapor emanated from their remains. Shortly afterwards, the three lumbermen fell ill and their mental state rapidly deteriorated. It appears that my presence in this region is most warranted. So this is what happened to the others who were consumed by ethereals and died. Good thing we did not succumb to that horrendous event. I'm having fun learning about the lore so far. So much so that it doesn't bother me as much that we haven't found our way to that cave yet. This is a strong gun. I really should have gone for that soldier build, but anyway. I guess we're doing good. Oh, we're doing good! You reached level 4. Now let's level up our attributes, shall we? Let's go for the spirit. A strong spirit increases the flow of energy into her being and allows you to withstand the spiritual burden of using more powerful enchanted items. Spirit also increases your capacity for pain and magnifies the damage of magical attacks. Energy is higher now, which is this green one over here. Now, how do we cast spells? Do we need a special staff for that? Scale wind, right? We have we now have six available points. What is this? Distortion. Requires 14 additional points, then I guess we go with this one. Wait. Can we choose another class? Hmm. Interesting. You know what? Let's just go with that one. And just, just two points because I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong, but I can't. I don't know how to add these to our quick slots. Let's go with that. Oh my dear, I've been looking at it for quite some time, but it says here if we hover on top of it, right click to assign skills. Oh dear, weapon attack, yeah, just click. Yeah, let's put in that Panetti's replicating missile and... Okay, so that's our active, that's our only active skill. And let's just put weapon attack over here and see what happens. It might be easier than just me clicking that left click button. Oh yeah, it is easier. Oh, that is so cool. You can just easily use off user magic ability. Oh, that is super cool. Now let's see what we got here. Can we update our... Our items? We don't have alternatives for shoes. Hmm. 
we, we can use this gun. Okay, I really wanted to use something else instead of that shield. Wait, what if we use this gun instead, huh? Oh, no, no. Whoa. We're just killing all of these. Feels like I'm watching the Walking Dead series because of the numerous undead attacking us. Okay, after this, why don't we try to look for that cave? Finally, we're here. Lower crossing rift. Okay, so we can at least go through there as a shortcut. Boy. And this game is bleak. Well, based on the title itself, pretty much is. In fact, the icon or the thumbnail of the game reminds me of Van Helsing, but a bit more on the bleak side. Let's use our magical abilities. So cool. Here's our star. Okay, I wouldn't mind fighting off these enemies because of how fun the gameplay is. Oh, wow! There are so many corrupted beings. No wonder there are just a few people left. Just one more. And the good part about this is the more we kill enemies, the higher the chances that we level up. We're already past the 50% mark, so that's a good thing. Ether crystal. Do we need that? I'm just get that. Oh, there's more. Actually, per pit, where the undead came from. Let's just get those. There may be one more over here. Nice. Just killed off all of them. Just a few more. Then we're here. We are so powerful just at the start of the game. The source of the dead is near. Let's get everything we can. Kill Kaizog the Reanimator. Level 5. Sweet. Sweet. Let's level this inner focus up a bit. And then... Yeah. Three points available. Devotion... Yes. Confirm changes, yes. Oh, because we already used up all of our points in Arcanist. Now... Why is this blinking? Just an indication that we can switch weapons, I suppose. But we haven't gotten any new ones. Ether crystal, a crystalline shard still lingering with ethereal power, can be used in the creation of arcane items. So we do have the element of crafting in this game, I suppose. Cool. Let's just check out the map. So nothing is revealed to us. Interesting. Let's go. I 
I wonder how this game plays when you play it with other people. This is my first ARPG. Unless you count in Divinity Original Sin 2. Oh no. Oh, th so this is who we're supposed to kill. But yeah, this is my first one. And a lot of people say that this is a spiritual successor of... Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Planescape Torment. Wow, the those are sweet loots. Planescape Torment, Diablo, and Path of Exile. Let's get all of it! Let's get all of it! Nice. We can just click on the words themselves to get the items. Not necessarily the items, but the words. That's easier. Huh. Return to Captain John Bourbon. Why don't we explore a bit? So we can level up. Oh, what is that eyeball? Oh, let's get all of these. Oh, we can. Okay. It's them again coming from that strange ethereal source. Okay, that crystal is probably giving them life. Because as soon as we killed or destroyed it, they died. Iron bits. Yeah, we need those iron bits. But before we go out, we now have a lot of items. Complete components. Oh, it's auto-sorted now. Cool. Why don't we exchange your stuff now? 75% health. Well, it's more or less the same. So let's just keep this for now. And what is this? Rune Bone of Decay. Magic offhand. Oh yeah, definitely. Let's go. Let's go with the magic offhand. No! Wait. Can't we equip it? All required spirit is 95, which we can update. Cool. And then can we use a gun? Nice, nice. That's nice. Wait, I think I want to go for... I think I want to go for a mace instead. Since we can use this staff as a long-ranged attack. Yeah, and then we have one for melee. I really do love melee. Let's try that. I want to see what happens when we return to Captain John Bourbon. I remember there's a portal we saw before entering the cave. Who is this? Pharos the Rotted. It's probably a, an enemy hero. Got to get him. Whoa, okay, he's pretty strong. He's pretty strong. What if we just run away? Scrap. Nope. I don't think I'd like to fight off with you now, sir. I even left that scrap there on purpose. Okay, there, we have this lower rift crossing. Let's go north. Nice, we go back to Devil's Crossing. I realized that we summoned our rift travel in front of Captain John Bourbon. This, this one. Okay, let's talk to the him. Dead attacks have slowed and their numbers are thinning. I take that as a sign that you've dealt with the source? I have killed the reanimator. A creature was doing this? Disturbing. Thanks to your efforts, we may yet hold out here a little longer. I've sent word to the gate guard. Speak to him and he should let you in. Take some well-deserved time to rest and recover. Welcome to Devil's Crossing. That's one heck of an initiation. I mean, we... No, we did not almost die, but we could have. We could have died. We need some time to plan our strategy. In the meantime, there are others around Devil's Crossing who could use your help. 
Take a moment to mingle with your fellow survivors. Kasparov, our resident scientist, is really eager to speak with you. He babbled some nonsense, but I believe he wants to talk about your connection with the Ethereals. Barnabas, our handyman, said he needed help with our water pump. When you're done assisting them, speak with me in my office inside the prison. I would like to ask a few questions again. I'll try my best to answer them. You've earned that much. Thank you. Langman called me Taken. What did he mean? We did read about the Taken as those who were corrupted. It's our word for those possessed by ethereals. Taken can be difficult to distinguish from normal humans, but you or whatever possessed you stumbled through the rift gate here and became trapped by Kasparov's wards. As you were dangling from the gallows, we watched as the spirit left your body to die. That was when I had Jarvis cut you down. I won't lie to you, it's not going to be easy for folks around here to get used to you. Nature of the times. I do agree, I mean, I would have killed the human us who was possessed by the ethereal just to prevent the risk of us killing other people. What is the situation here? I think we did ask that already. As well as, what are these ethereals? Okay, so guys, I know we've only completed one quest in this playthrough. And I think this is a good time to wrap it up. Before we end, let's talk about the game. What I like about Grim Dawn is first, its strong player character upon starting. More often than not, we always begin with a character who is incapable of defending himself or herself from enemies, making for a huge adjustment period at times. This is not the case with Grim Dawn, since our initial character is able to single-handedly eliminate a lot of corpses. And that makes the game fun. You immediately feel powerful right from the get-go. Second is the multiple classes, skills, and loot we can choose from, and as a result, the combat becomes massively fun. The possibilities of who we can become are endless, like what we did when we went for the one-handed sword and gun, coupled with a magical ability. Third is the grim and dour story and environment coupled with blind exploration. The environment is a huge strength of the game because of how the created world is just distinctly horrible. Humanity has been ravaged and there are only a number of people who are left to survive. In relation to this one is the blind exploration, where the map is not initially revealed to us unless we find it, making the game much more unknown and therefore scary than it already is. During the time I was playing, I can't help but feel this dread in the pit of my stomach because of what's happened and what will happen in the world of Grim Dawn. Fourth is the multitasking in-game feature, which is the ability to open and decide what to do with our inventory while fighting against monsters. Additionally, what I like about this option is it adds to the horror of the environment when we can't pause the game, especially when a looming threat is nearby. Moving on to the bad part is the one and only Quick Slot. You did see my rather inept way of figuring out how to put skills in their respective slots. My train of thought was either right-clicking on the skill and then subsequently adding it to the quick slot or simply dragging it there. But alas, this is not the case. And last but not the least are the curiosities. I wonder how engaging and interactive a co-op playthrough is and how much added difficulty will be there when facing off against foes. Also, I haven't explored the game as much, so is there a way for us to automatically loot all the stuff after killing monsters? Given the large volume of loot we pick up after certain encounters, I imagine our lives will be easier with this automatic feature in place. That's a wrap, guys. Don't forget to like and to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this video. Thank you for watching, and have a good week ahead.